You're listening to the following on Daily Podcast out here in India. I'm Neil Manthorp and I'll be joined by Double Ashes winner Steve Harmison and the former England fast bowler Darren Goff to look back at day three of the second test between India and England. The game moving along quickly here in Vishakapatnam. After bowling India out for 253 earlier in the day, uh, England closed the third day on 67 for one, needing another 332 runs to go 2-0 up in the series. We'll get exclusive reaction from uh, brilliant England fast bowler Jimmy Anderson and Chetan Narula will discuss the big talking points of the day and the match concerning India. So plenty to come over the next 25 minutes or so. You're listening to Following On. Another remarkable day's cricket, so full of action with the bat and ball and in the field saw India resume on 28 without loss. They were bowled out for 255 and uh, the action began early with Jimmy Anderson striking twice to remove Rohit Sharma for 13 and uh, Yashasvi Jaiswal for 17. But Shubman Gill um, played a, a blinder of an innings for his third Test 100 to make 104. Akshar Patel made 45, but England chipped away, chipped away, kept working, and Tom Hartley finished with four for 77, with Rian Ahmed making three for 88, all of which left England, oh, Jimmy Anderson took two for 29 in 10 overs, but it, it was the tone that he set at the beginning of the day that uh, England were able to capitalise on, all of which left England to score 399 to win in uh, two and a bit days, and they made their usual flying start with Zach Crawley finishing the day on 29. Rian Ahmed, promoted to Nighthawk, came in at the fall of Ben Duckett's wicket to finish with nine not out, played almost a shot of ball. Uh, Duckett went for 28, caught bat pad off uh, the bowling of Ravi Chandra and Ashwin. And history suggests that uh, England will not win this Test match because nobody has chased uh, this many runs in India to win a Test match ever before in the history of Test cricket. But if anybody... Uh, can carry on rewriting the history books. It is this England team. Darren Goff and Steve Harmison uh, have enjoyed this action-packed, fantastic uh, day's cricket. And uh, Darren Goff, um, it all started with uh, Jimmy Anderson. Uh, England needed early wickets, really needed early wickets. We spoke about Yashasvi Jaiswal or Rohit Sharma batting through the day and uh, really taking England out of the game. And he provided them, Jimmy Anderson. Uh, absolutely. Um, we talked about it at the start of play, didn't we? But England, to have any chance, really need to get them out, dismiss them for 200 in that second innings. And it looked like we were, were on target because Jimmy Anderson started off getting rid of Jaswell and Rohit Sharma. Uh, was unbelievable, really, and he just summed up the class. He's been around a long, long time. Yes, he might be in his 40s now. He might be a tad slower than he used to be. But he puts the ball in the right areas. He makes the ball go either way. And if there's anything whatsoever in the pitch, Jimmy Anderson will find it. And he dismissed those two openers with two very well. One very good delivery and one which we used to. Getting the ball in the right areas to the left-hander and just in the drive straight into the slip. Harmi, what is fascinating about the Indian innings is that, uh, you know, there were some really expensive overs in there. Rian Ahmed's gone for a couple of dozen in two overs. Um, uh, Tom Hartley was also, you know, conceded some, some big runs and big overs. There was 16 off and over at one stage of Rian Ahmed. And, uh, and yet you look down and you go, how are they bowled out for 255? And Stokes' encouragement to the bowlers not to worry about that because there was some, you know, um, Shubman Gill scored uh, 104 of 140 balls and was going great guns and uh, boundaries seem to be flowing they're hitting sixes and yet they're bowled out for 255 and it's it's just Ben Stokes saying it doesn't matter if you keep taking wickets we're desperate to keep taking wickets we're you know I thought he I thought he controlled the, the field very very well again he he, he had in out fields he had some defensive fields and then you know when he needed to attack he attacked and he he played on the on the side of, of India looking at the scoreboard going what do we need can we do we need to eke out a few more and i thought at the, even at the end when our ashram was in you know, a lot of captains before would have come up third ball the over fourth ball the over and and give maybe two or three boundaries away to try and get jasper bummer on strike but ben stokes was like no we'll take one one and over we'll get one ball at him we'll get one that will will shoot and then all of a sudden you know they're not running away from us we're not shifting momentum into their Bowling, um, bowling, set fourth innings where, 
you know the the tail enders have smacked a couple of boundaries and we've seen the the momentum shift so i thought all in all in isolation i thought it was a brilliant bowling performance by the england cricket team i thought that you know when it comes to the, their endeavors they kept going it's the third innings of a game we've got to remember as well tom hartley's played two test matches rian ahmed's played three test matches show bashir's played one test match so when i say it's a it's a, an excellent performance it is in the context with you know the amount of caps we've got which you know the inexperience that's there along with anderson i thought 255 off 78 overs for me that's that's a job well done unfortunately they're that far behind the the rate in the game because you know the, the, their ability of their inability to score runs in that first innings and we all knew that was could be the issue but you know i thought i thought england stuck out the tax very well i thought the catches were, were excellent i thought the energy in the field was was good um and from from an inexperienced bowling apart i i thought they did their job very very well Goffey, um, Harmy's mentioned the catching, which I thought was outstanding. And I, I just think that we should mention uh, Ben Folks' glove work as well. He's taken three bottom edges in this uh, test match so far. Bottom edges off the spinner, which is uh, supreme, supreme skill. Keeping his centre of gravity low and keeping low to the ground and, and, you know, just keeping the gloves in position. We also should mention Ben Stokes' catch at long off, running back to the boundary, looking over his shoulder to get rid of Shreya Sire. Uh, Johnny Bairstow took a very good one, low at slip. And it was just the persistence and uh, the dogged refusal to... Uh, to 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 leave the bone alone, <laughs> basically from well, England that paid off. Well, exactly, and I think we we've credited England for every one of them. They've turned up and they all look fit, look a very very fit side. England do um, a couple of them that were a little bit heavy going into the series, going in before the series had to come here, and they've worked hard on the fitness. Now Ben Stokes, the surgeon, deserves a knighthood for him to get back with the agility and the movement. And the way he's run and moved in the field, I'm fascinated by it. I really, really am. He's been excellent. A great bit of um, fielding in the first test for that run out. And now, one running over his head. What a great catch that was, by the way. Um, and when it comes down to folks, he keeping. We talk about it many times. Unfortunately, sometimes, because the way the game is, you're always looking for a batter that can keep. But Ben Folks gets runs. He might not do it in the style of some of the other batter keepers around the world, but he gets the job done. And behind the stumps in these conditions, he was excellent today. A poor start to the series, that first day, a bit rusty. But since then, he has been outstanding behind the stumps. Yeah, if you had that knee surgeon, Darren, you would have you had an extra five years on your career, wouldn't you? If you had that, instead of going to Germany every week to get the uh, the blood transfusions. But yeah, you're right. I think the the hard part from from me, Goffy, is you know trying to not, the understanding that people don't criticise Ben Folks when he got left out. Don't criticise that he's not. It's not because he's not a good player. You you see Harry Brook all the time. You've seen Harry Brook come through. The only way that Ben that Harry Brook could get into this team was was unfortunately if Johnny Bairstow kept wicket when he wasn't ready to keep wicket, but it was the right thing because we needed Johnny in the team as well. So I think Ben Folks, I think he will go down at the end of his career as one of the unluckiest cricketers that he couldn't fit into the team as as, as everybody else could because um, everybody, like Darren says, wants the batter, that the keeper that the batter can score runs. So he never lets England down, and he didn't in this game. Uh, the, the two catches were regulation catches by sight. But boy, if you speak to anybody from a keeper point of view, or anybody that's that's played the game at a, at a, at a good level, they'll say you know, the skill level, with the way them, them, them were taken, were, was unbelievable. He took them with ease because he's a very, very, very good keeper. Probably the best that one of the best that we've ever had from a glove point of view. I just want to point out that when he walked to the crease in England's second innings in Hyderabad, they were still 27 runs away from making India bad again. And he's added 100 with uh, Ollie Pope. So, yes, he's not uh, the, the baseball stylist um, that Goffey referred to. But uh, Jeepers, they were important runs, you know, and he didn't get enough credit for them either. No, he doesn't. And he, I think that was a 400-run partnership that Ben Folks has been involved in. You know, there was one at, at Edgebaston, I think. Edgebaston, no, at Trent Bridge with Ben Stokes, which was a big partnership to to get England in a position to, to win a game. There was one in, in, in New Zealand um, when when Ben Folks came out and there was trouble in time. When the back's against the wall, he's got character. He stands up. And, you know, when you... 
when you see him behind the stumps, you know, you, you don't notice him. And that, for me, is one of the biggest compliments you can pay to a, a witty keeper. When you don't notice them, it means they are doing not only their job 100% correct, they're doing it with efficiency. You, you notice your witty keepers when it's bouncing off them or they're dropping it and you know, they're, they're, they're fumbling and it's not looking, it's going in with hard hands. You know, listening to Ben, Ben folks keep up to the stumps, and you hear through the stump camera. It just eases into the gloves. You know, for me, he's one of the best glovemen that I've seen for England. But unfortunately, you know, the better batters that are around, and you've got the the carrot that dangles you with Johnny Bairstow can keep wicket as well. And we've seen in Pakistan that Ollie Pope can do it. You can see why England have made the decisions with Ben folks in the past. But I think now he's potentially here to stay for a while bit more to talk about with Darren Goff and Steve Harmison and we're also going to hear from Jimmy Anderson in a moment but Chet and Narula now we we should speak about uh, this Indian team particularly Shubman Gill I mean um, a, a magnificent hundred uh, today he did have two lives if we can call it that both on four he was given out LBW and he 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 was persuaded by his partner Shreyas Iyer to review it and it showed that he got the thinnest of edges onto his pad, which he wasn't even aware of, because he was asked, actually, by Ben Folks, did you know you hit that? And he, and he could see him shaking his head, saying no. So that was a lie. He then, um, England reviewed a not out, Jimmy Anderson, which showed the ball hitting the top of uh, off stump, but not enough of the ball hitting enough of the stump. So twice on four, he's, he's had a life. And um, he then, a short while after that, didn't throw caution to the wind, but he, he, there was a definite change. He played some more shots. He said, just be Shubman Gill. Stop trying to be Shubman Gill, the test player. And he was brilliant. Well, I think uh, it just shows the kind of lack of confidence he had in that early part of the innings. And, uh, you know, a batter who is in good form and good nick and, you know, he's confident in what he's doing would probably know, even if there's the slightest of edges, would probably know and would definitely go for, for that review and say, oh, you know what, I need this. I need this innings. I need to score runs and I, I need to stay at the wicket and help my team score some runs. But obviously you can see the mindset he was in. But as you mentioned, yes, and we were on the call uh, with, with, with Harmison um, and, and we discussed, I think, Shreyas Ayer. Yes, he didn't score too many runs and his own position perhaps might be in jeopardy. But he helped Gill through that uh, initial passage of play and there was a rotating strike at that particular time. Those singles, I think, really helped calm down uh, you know, Gill in terms of what he was thinking at that time. And once he got settled, and I thought especially after lunch, when he came out, he was a very, very different Shubman Gill. He had some runs behind his back. He had he'd scored a half century, which he hasn't scored at number three. So we saw the Shubman Gill that we expect to see and, and the kind of uh, shots that he can play. He has just so much time. He's, he's got perfect placement in, in, you know, when he's in full flow. So we got to see that that batter that we have heard so much about. And look, he's an important, important cog in the wheel for India's future. India have invested in Shubman Gill and they need to give him time to settle down in that position. He asked for it and, you know, he's he's been shafted up and down. He's played a lot of... Uh, you know, domestic cricket in the middle order. And then he's moved up top. And when he came to test cricket, he was a makeshift opener. Now he's asked to move at number three as India is preparing its future. So I think it's warranted that he was given this time. Uh, I don't know what would have happened if Virat Kohli had come back and he hadn't scored any runs. But with especially Shreyas Ayer not scoring runs and KL Rahul also primed for a comeback. But now with that 100, we know that he can be afforded that long rope and that time. And it was absolutely necessary to give him that time and, and because Shubman Gill is one for the future. He certainly is. Right, Jimmy Anderson has been uh, speaking to Andrew McKenna. Let's, uh, let's hear from Jimmy. The exceptional day's cricket or in the England cricket vernacular, just a normal day at the office, I guess, for you guys. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was a really good day. I thought, you know, we, we bowled well from, from ball one. Um, there was a period, obviously, where they, they put in a partnership, which you expect out here on uh, a decent wicket, uh, but I thought the way we stuck at it, as particularly the, the spinners, I think they've been absolutely outstanding this whole trip so far. You know, not much experience between them, but um, they just keep turning up and, and putting in the performances that the team needs from them, that the captain asks of them. You know, the captain sort of jiggles the field around, but they just get on with their job and, and they've done it fantastically again today. 
You gave them the chance though. That ball to get Rohit was an absolute worldie, going in and then nipping away. That was, that's got to be up there with one of the best one you've sent down. Yeah, I was happy with that, yeah. Was, um, you know, there's been a bit in this wicket actually with the new ball in particular. So I've, I've, I knew that it was important that I got us off to a good start this morning and um, tried to put as many balls in the right place as I possibly could. And um, obviously I'm, uh, there's a, lo a bit of luck involved as well, I wasn't trying to do exactly what that ball did but you just as I said you try and get the enough balls in the right area and hope that, that one does something and um, you know I thought I bowled really well first innings and um, on another day could have got more wickets and um, just happy that I could back that up in the second innings. Mark Wood told us in Hyderabad he was only ever going to bowl four over spells you've done something similar is that again a plan because me when you were going so well this morning, we were a bit surprised that you didn't go a little bit longer. Is that the plan for you as well, to go short, or is it take it uh, session by session? Yeah, well, it wasn't in the first innings because I bowled a six over and eight over spell, so it's, a bit, it's been a little bit different for me because there's been a bit more in this wicket for, for the seam bowlers. But this morning, we just met, you know, Ben and myself um, sort of decided that once that early movement had gone, then it's probably the best decision to get the, the spinners on and then sort of save some miles in my legs because there wasn't that much of a break between it, um, our f bowling in the first innings and bowling in the second innings so the just take its toll on the body so um, you know we wanted to wait for it to reverse swing later on and then uh, use me in that way. Shubman played a big innings that obviously has had a big impact but that LBW review he had, didn't have a clue that he got a nick on that one that was purely a well let's see if we can find something if that one goes your way that's a very very different day isn't it? Yeah, I thought there was a couple of LBWs that, you know, on another day could go your way, but that's just the nature of the game. And um, as I said earlier, I think we stuck at our tasks really well. You know, players are allowed to play well. I think what that does do, seeing Shubman play the way he did, gives us our confidence, uh, sorry, our batters' confidence to, to go out there and know that there's still a big score in that wicket. So if we get a couple of guys in tomorrow, um, play the way that we know we can play, uh, then we've got a great chance. What was the message from Ben between innings before you came out to bat? Uh, no real message. I think everyone was absolutely clear on what we wanted to do. Um, uh, the, the coach said last night, you know, if, even if they get 600, we're going to try and chase it down. So uh, knowing that we've got less than 400, 400 to chase, you know, the guys knew exactly what their job was to do. The, the openers have been absolutely amazing for us in the last 18 months, two years. Um, you know, averaging well over 50 uh, as an opening pair, so we, they just know exactly what their job is. They've done it exactly, or showed us exactly what they can do going out there again. I'm lucky that Ben got out, uh, a bit unfortunate with that dismissal, but still got us off to a great start and we're in a really good position. Does the night hawk live? Uh, Harmy actually spotted between innings that Ryan was out having a few throwdowns and said they could be sending him out number three here. It, was that the plan? Yeah, well, he walked off the field wanting to put his pads on, so he's. he's you know, really keen to get out there, and yeah, that was the plan. He was, he was. I think from about six overs out, he was going in to to try and do his thing, and he showed in that last over as well. He wasn't going to block any out. So, um, you know, it's really exciting to see players who not just can do that, but actually want to go and do it and show their their skills. He's now got an opportunity tomorrow to go and score some more runs. Um, so yeah, we. I feel like we're in a really good position. It's a, you know, the dressing room's really clear on what we want to do. We're going to go out there and try and win right to the last ball. We're not going to try and draw at any stage or anything. It's literally we are winning or losing this game. There's 180 overs left in this match for you to score 330 more. If England get 330, it's not going to take 180 overs. We know that for a fact. Yeah, we'll try and do it in 60 or 70. I think tomorrow. I think that's been the nature of the way we've played in the last couple of years so it's it's going to be really exciting whatever happens and um, you know we know that we play our best when we're playing that positive sort of cricket we want to put pressure back onto uh, the Indian bowlers whenever we get the opportunity we know that they've got quality in their side um, that we've, we've seen that already in this game but um, we back ourselves to, to try and chase anything down on any wicket. So the message for everyone back home strap yourselves in early tomorrow it's going to be a bumpy ride but a fun one. Well, I hope it's not too bumpy, but you know, we, we're, we're going out there to win the game, as I said. We're going to try and do it in a positive manner. So, yeah, hopefully we can entertain people along the way. Enjoy. Cheers. Darren Goff and Steve Harmson listening to that. Uh, all ears, all attention. Goffy, your thoughts? Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? Um, he's all excited. Um, he's happy he's got wickets. So he had a disappointing summer as far as taking wickets are concerned. Jimmy Anderson against Australia. Or he could have possibly retired. He wants to go out on a high. He's bowled beautifully this test match, picked up wickets. 
And he's talking about England there. They, we all know that. They, they want to win or lose. They're not, they're, they're not bothered about draws. They're going to come out. They're going to enjoy themselves, play a few shots and see what happens. They're going to either fall short or they're going to win. Simple. There's no real science behind it. Play some shots, try and hit some boundaries, put pressure on India. At some point, we'll all be sat here thinking, it's a good partnership, this. Can they do it? <laughs> we will be doing that tomorrow, I guarantee it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah, 100%. I didn't add too much more to what Goffey said there and what Jimmy was Jimmy's he's positive about this game. England don't see, I don't think they see 331 on the board. They see three sessions to bat tomorrow. And if we are still bat, if we bat them three sessions, we've won the game because the way England's scoring rate is in this match so far, it's been 100 runs, just over 100 runs in a, in a session. And if England can, can bat for the day tomorrow, England win the game for me. And that... That is an exciting proposition. That's what England are thinking. I'm sure Rohit Sharma, R. Ashwin and Jasper Bumrah have got something else to say about that. It's going to be a fascinating day tomorrow. But if England do get off to a good start, I think there'll be quite a few of us saying exactly what Goffey said there. Can they? Can they? Can they? Well, fingers crossed. Let's hope they can. What well, was really interesting is when Jimmy Anderson said, I think we'll try and get them in 60 or 70 overs. And I don't think they're going to go out there and try and score at a rate to score them in 60 or 70. But Goffey, what he's saying is that the more quickly they score, the quicker they score their runs, the less wicket-taking balls they have to face. Well, look, look at the runs they scored in the second innings in Hyderabad. This is a better pitch. Short boundary straight, quick outfield. You've seen um, the Nighthawk came in and played shot a ball. He's going to carry on doing that exactly the same tomorrow. And when you have got the quality of Root, Bairstow, who are due runs, both of them, let's be honest about it here, two quality players, due runs, and Ben Stokes, anything is possible. Rian Ahmed is going to bed tonight dreaming of 100 tomorrow. And seeing him, seeing him in the morning for the last seven mornings of Test Match Cricket out in India. I'll tell you what, he's going to do some shadow batting in his room tonight. Good, good luck to you, Riyad. Come on, Sam. <laughs> Coming up here on Chalksport 2 in the Championship, Sunderland against Middlesbrough. Uh, but for now, from Vishakapatnam, after three fantastic days of Test Cricket, thank you for your company. It's uh, the following on podcast. We look forward to your company once again just before 4 a.m. UK time for day four.